WCNC Charlotte. This is Flashpoint, where power and politics collide and the tough questions get asked and answered. Thanks for joining us here on Flashpoint. I'm Ben Thompson. This week, we are speaking to two of the most influential people in North Carolina party politics, including the brand new chair of the state Democratic Party, Anderson Clayton, defying expectations in becoming the party's top leader at just the age of 25. Her plan to win over more rural voters back to the Democratic Party. Then a little bit later, we'll speak with North Carolina's Republican chair as his party works to win the governor's mansion in 2024. But first, joining us now, the brand new chair of the North Carolina Democratic Party, Anderson Clayton. Anderson, thanks for coming on Flashpoint. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. All right, so I usually don't lead with somebody's age, but I mean, I do feel like that's sort of like, you know, the, the, the big headline here. You are 25, uh, full disclosure there. Um, but you really defied party establishment who, who wanted somebody else, um, who publicly supported somebody else. What do you think your election to, to this big position, what do you think it says about the current state of, of politics in general, but also uh, about the, more specifically, the Democratic Party in North Carolina. I think it says that our party is ready for change. I think that we are ready to have a generational shift, honestly, and, and you know who's in charge of our party right now and who's speaking up for the issues that are really important to North Carolinians. And I, I think that it's just an opportunity. I've been really welcomed in by Governor Cooper and Attorney General Stein and you know all of my members of Congress who supported my my opponent in this. But I because we know that we've got to come together as Democrats, honestly, at the end of the day. We need to make sure that you know our, our disagreements are not within our party, but they are with people who don't have the same visions and dreams for our communities that that we do and i think that that's the really exciting part about this is that there's you know a new opportunity for new leadership and new voices to actually be heard from from the democratic perspective we have we're not a monolithic party and i feel like i need to say that to a lot of folks we are a big tent party and we have a lot of different viewpoints and and ideas about how the way that this party should go forward and everyone should have the opportunity to be able to really, I think, uh, express those opinions and be able to run on them if they want to, too. So I think it's really opening up a, a new way forward for our party in order to be able to embrace people from every walk of life. What do you think Democrats were doing wrong uh, last year uh, to explain what was pretty good news nation nationwide, but not such great news here in North Carolina? Yeah, I think that one of the things that we just didn't do really is actually talk to rural North Carolina about the money that's coming down right now from the federal government when it comes to the bipartisan infrastructure bill and the American Rescue Plan. Um, you know, I think that what I've always seen in rural communities is that folks just do not believe that government is actually working for them. And, and I think that the party and, and both parties, honestly, not just the Democratic Party, but the Republican Party, too, has the ability and the right to show people that government does work for you. And here's how it's doing that right now. You know, the affordable connectivity program is thirty dollars off of a, off your off a month of somebody's Internet bill. Um, and that got passed for if you're 200 percent below the poverty line. Right now, we should be educating people and talking to them about the policies that are that are happening at the federal level level that are trying to make people's lives easier at the end of the day because right now in rural North Carolina it's it's hard to just live in, in an everyday circumstance you're worried about you know how do you put a roof over your head can I pay my rent that month am I going to be able to put food on the table and I think that you know we we talk about these issues in politics to me as if they're um you know, as if they're buzzwords to some degree, but I'm like, that's not like it's it's people's reality, and we need to be talking. I think in a way that actually shows people, and at a granular level, you know, what does politics actually do for you? What should government be doing for you? Um, and holding people accountable at that local level too. I tell people all the time that you know part of the responsibility as Democrats is to hold our own accountable as well, and we need to make sure that we are always, I think, trying to be representative voices of the districts and the people that we're representing, because at the end of the day, politics is about people. It's not about partisanship. So, do you think? I think the conventional wisdom is the core of the Democratic Party is urban centers uh, like Charlotte, deep blue. Um, but but you're making a valid point there about rural voters as well that have typically, at least in recent years, been sort of the backbone of the Republican Party. Do you think you can speak to both groups at the same time about the same issues? I think you can because I think that you know, for me. 
I, I tell people all the time, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. And and I know that because of being in Person County, I know that you know the, the, the values that I hold here as a rural person in a rural community are the same things and the same issues that people in my urban communities are also fighting for. Affordable housing is something that we're dealing in rural North Carolina with right now too, just as much as you're dealing with it in an urban center. You know, the ability to actually have clean water and, and good access to healthcare right now. It's not just impacting our cities, but it's also impacting our rural communities. You know, without Medicaid expansion, across our state right now rural hospitals are closing you cannot find good prenatal care especially in eastern north carolina right now and i think that we've got to bring and we've got to put forth these issues in front of folks as you know democrats are coming forward united on on certain things like we want to expand medicaid we want to make sure municipal broadband is allowed to happen in north carolina and that folks can operate their own infrastructure if they want to we want to make sure that cities are able to to do what they they need to for their communities rather than being restricted by our state government like they are right now um, I think that localities don't actually have the ability to do what they need to do in order to um, help their community survive every day. And so we've got a big role to play in, in making sure that people understand that and are, are fighting for that, honestly. Do you think Republicans have done a better job appealing to rural voters on, on things that they care about, um, whether it's culture war, war issues or, or, as they say, wokeism or some of these things that really... Um, can, can get a reaction out of people and, and people really start to care about that. A lot of folks would say the Democratic Party is completely ignored or at least did not get a good footing on. Yeah, I mean, I think that the Democratic Party has a good has a good long way to go on messaging. And I tell people about this position that I'm in right now. You know, this is not a two year. My term is two years, but it's not a two year thing that we're talking about. You know, we're talking about a a rebuild of our party in some capacities, because I think that right now the Democratic Party has got to rebuild trust. And especially in rural North Carolina, like I, I tell folks, you know, people are afraid to call themselves Democrats sometimes out here. And I want to make I want to make sure that every Democrat feels proud to call themselves that, that they can understand that this party is fighting for them because we fight for working people and and that's where that's where we need to go in the future and for me i want to be the messenger that gives people the the ability to say that we care about rural North Carolina and we see the future of it, we have a vision for it, we understand that there's economic opportunity there that has been honestly not um, not looked at as it should have been in the past, I think. And, you know, as we've always looked at rural communities as a problem versus an opportunity. And I'm like, I want to live in rural North Carolina for the rest of my life. And people tell me I'm crazy when I'm 25 and I want to be able to say that, but I do. And I think that we should always be looking at communities as though what's their future, not how do we um, you know, help them into a, a slow decline to some degree. So I think that Republicans have done a good job. I don't think that the Republicans have necessarily had any competition though. And that's what I want to really provide to them uh, in this capacity is, is making sure they've got competition in areas where they, I don't feel like they've had to compete for, for much of anything in the last um, decade, to be honest with you. Do you think President Biden should run for re-election? I think that I'm excited to see who runs for re-election in 2024, but I'm also really focused on North Carolina. I think that, you know, for me, people ask me about the presidential level of things. And while I used to work on presidential campaigns, uh, the reason that I left national politics is because I fully believe that all politics is local. Uh, and that's where your fully um, belief and backing should be right now. So I think that President Biden should run for re-election in 2024. I'm excited to to see the continuation of the of what Democrats have been able to do at the federal level, because rural North Carolina right now is benefiting from it. Our communities are benefiting from it. And we need to make sure that folks like that are still in office, I think. But I also really want to make sure that people understand the priorities and we should be focused on what's going on in your own backyard right now. Uh, my problem with the Democratic Party, and I've said it before, but you know, people can tell me everything about George Santos, what he ate for breakfast this morning, what counties he represents, and what he did or not did or did not do in high school. Um, but they can't tell me who the five people on their board of county commissioners are. And, and and that's what I really want people to look at right now because those are the folks that are making decisions that are impacting your everyday life. Uh, sounds like you've got your work cut out for you. Um, again, congrats on, on the new position. And uh, best of luck as well. Um, Anderson, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for the time. I really appreciate it too. And all thank right. you for all that you do. All right, take care. More Flashpoint after this.